Today we are going to be looking at topic 390. Sorry about the delay. I had a bit of an accident on my side. <laughs> Hectic accident, but it is well. We are going to be looking at growing to be fruitful. And as we start, I would like us to start with a prayer. Father, we thank you. We bless you for this time you have given us. Come and have your way. Lead us, guide us, awesome Father. We ask you, Spirit of the living God, come and teach us. Come and have your way today. In the mighty name of our Lord Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. I just want to start again by apologizing. Okay, I had a bit of an accident on my side. It was hectic, but I am fine and it is well. Uh, a bit of an accident on my side and yeah. Today we are going to be looking at how to grow and how to grow and to be fruitful. It is so important to understand that as a child of God, you are not just expected to say, I have been uh, a Christian for these years. We don't just count years. We don't just talk about, you know what I mean, the years we have spent in the Lord, how long we have known the Lord. But it is so important to understand that when we grow, we need to grow fruitfully. We need to grow in fruit. Areas of our lives have to show that we are maturing in the Lord. Just like in our physical life, whereby you grow in your body. Now, when you read the word of God, the Bible talks about Jesus growing physically but not just physically but he also grew in wisdom and jesus was able to also show fruit as he was growing and as a child of god it is so important for you to understand that as you grow and mature in the lord you have to show fruit that you are growing in the lord it doesn't matter if you are five days old in the lord we have to see fruit and as a child of god we have to aim to grow and growth means we grow in the fruit that we bring forth how do we get this fruit that we are talking about i want to start by saying the moment you receive jesus christ in your life the moment you take him as your personal lord and savior and you gain a relationship with god through jesus christ the spirit of the Lord comes inside of you and this spirit of God is not just for you to feel nice you know what and for you to be like yeah I am a, a newborn the spirit of the Lord is for you to become more like like Christ in character so that your old nature can die and you can yield to the leading of this spirit to convict you to discipline you and to make you be more like Jesus Christ it's more about being transformed to turn into the nature of Jesus Christ and as you allow yourself to be that definitely child of God you are going to become fruitful in the things of the spirit of God Remember, also the other world that gives in to that other spirit, which is not the spirit of God, also produces fruit. You know, you can read Genesis chapter 5 and you can see the fruit that that other world produces. The world that is not in Christ also produces fruit. You look at those who are not in Christ and you see the fruit of who they are following and who they are obeying and who they are yielding to. Now, the moment we yield into the Holy Spirit, you and I are supposed to produce fruit that shows that we are growing in Jesus Christ and through the Spirit of God. Now, growing spiritually and in faith is a lifelong process. It is not something you are going to say that, you know what, I have reached I have arrived. I have been here working with the Lord for 50 years and I have arrived. We never arrive. Every single day, I want to say to student of the word, we are always yearning to grow. And the day you stop yearning to grow in the Lord, I want to say to you, is the day you are going to start becoming stagnant in the spirit and in your spiritual walk with the Lord. You cannot say, I have arrived. I have reached my peak. Every single day we are growing. And you know what is so amazing with the Holy Spirit? Is that he has all these facets that he always comes and touches a certain area of your life. When you see that you have grown in that area, he comes and, and then again brings you another side which you can, you know, grow more. And when you think you have grown so much in that area, the Holy Spirit again touches another area. And the word of God says in John chapter 15 that the Father is glorified when we bring much 
fruit when we bear it doesn't say when we bear a few fruit it doesn't say when we buy bear a bit of fruit the father is glorified when we bear much fruit the more you allow the holy spirit to take you the process of growth the more you are going to bear fruit much fruit and believe me child of god that is how we glorify the father the father is glorified when we bear much fruit and this process is long it is a lifelong process and you have to be ready for this process but you know what is amazing is the fruit that we produce as we yield in the spirit of god so i want to encourage you never ever think you have arrived never ever think you have got it all you have to allow him daily to grow you and you know what the aim is to bring fruit manifesting less the acts of the flesh okay that is something that happens the more you yield to the holy spirit the more there's gonna be a less manifestation of the flesh now galatians chapter 5 verses 19 to 21 as i told you earlier talks about these fruits now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery fornication um uncleanness lowerness idolatry sorcery hatred contentions jealousy outbursts of wrath selfishness selfish ambitions dissensions here says envy murders drunkenness and the likes of which i tell you beforehand just as i also told you in time past that those who practice such things will not inherit the kingdom of god remember the more you yield to the holy spirit to grow spiritually the more you are going to become more in the spirit and that is when the flesh is going to manifest less we produce more of the fruit of the spirit as we grow spiritually and in faith now galatians chapter 5 again from verse 22 to verse 23 remember we read verse 19 to 21 which shows the fruit of the flesh and this is something that you have to see when you read verses 22 to 23 it tells you and shows you the same chapter a few verse after the other one showing you the fruit that is brought forth when someone yields to the holy spirit now but the fruit of the spirit is love joy peace long-suffering kindness goodness faithfulness gentleness self-control again as such there is no law we grow more in the spirit of the fruit of the spirit as we yield to the holy spirit we become more like jesus as we grow spiritually and in faith we start looking more like jesus john chapter 3 verse 30 he must increase but i must decreased this should be a prayer of every child of god this must be our prayer that i decrease but jesus increases daily and i want to say again as we started in the beginning there is no peak there's no arrival there is no i have done that i've been there you know i know it all i've gotten there it's not there as you walk in this journey of growing spiritually you have to allow the spirit of god to help you decrease so that jesus can increase now the moment jesus increases in our life as believers i want to say to you we will not even have to <laughs> to spend so much time to tell the world of this Jesus. We will spend less time to tell them about the Savior. You know what? Because they will see Christ in us and they will want this Savior that is in us. The moment we, will, we yield to the Holy Spirit, child of God, we are going to become more kind, loving, peaceful. There will be joy. There will be the fruit of the Holy Spirit gushing out of us that the world around us will run to this God. They will want this Jesus because we are allowing him to increase in us. And that is key as we grow spiritually and in faith. Now, we are given everything we need as children of God to grow and live a life 
of godliness. We don't have to seek for it. You and I have been given everything we need to be able to grow spiritually and also to live a godly life. Second Peter chapter 1 verse 3 to verse 9. As his divine power has given to us all things that pertain to the life and godliness through the knowledge of him who called us by the glory of virtue, by which have been given to us exceedingly great precious promises that through these you may be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is in the world through lust. But also for this very reason, giving all diligence add to your faith virtue and to virtue knowledge and to knowledge self-control and to self-control perseverance, to perseverance godliness, to godliness brotherly kindness and to brotherly kindness love. For if these things are yours and abide, you will be neither barren or unfruitful in the knowledge of our Lord Jesus. So when we conclude this scripture, we can see here increase in virtue, whereby your moral value, you put your a high moral value and you are standing in purity as a child of God. And this is so important as children of God. You know, Remember, this is not done in our own power. It is not done in our own ability. It is something that is done when we yield to the Holy Spirit. So if you are watching me and you are saying, how am I going to be able to do this? Now I want to say to you, it is not done in your power. It is not done in your ability. It is something that is done as you yield in to the Holy Spirit. As you say to the Holy Spirit, let me decrease and let Christ increase in me. As you do that, you will see your heart, your whole self is going to start listening to the conviction of the Holy Spirit. Remember, the Holy Spirit does not condemn. The Spirit of God convicts. He convicts. He disciplines. You are going to listen and also welcome the discipline of the Spirit of God. Because you are allowing yourself to be able to be, to yield to the spirit of God. Also this you increase knowledge and understanding of God's word. The more you are giving in to grow in God and to live a life of godliness. You also find yourself increasing in knowledge and the understanding of God's word. Are you struggling to have revelation? Are you struggling to read the word of God? I want to say to you it is all given to you to ask and you shall receive. Ask the spirit of God. He's there waiting for you to ask. Ask him and stop doing this in your own power. Stop reading and forcing it on yourself and say, I'm going to understand this word. I'm going to read this word. You know what? Yield and give into the Holy Spirit because you as a human being in a fleshly body, it's going to be very difficult for you to be able to yield to the things of the Spirit or even to be in that place. Give into the Holy Spirit and tell the Holy Spirit, I need you to help me, you know, I've done this so many times. I was one of those people who used to struggle badly when it comes to reading the word of God, disciplining myself and having revelation. But the day I understood that it's not by power or by might, but it's by the spirit of God, it got so much better. And it's so important for us to understand that. Increase and increase and perseverance. Um, we can see here decrease frequency and sincerity of sin. We can see increase and perseverance and godliness, God kind of conduct, increase kindness and love to others. As you give into the virtue of God to godliness, you are going to see that things like kindness increases. You start loving people in a way you cannot explain. You look at someone and you have this love you have for them. That is not just your normal love. There's just a different kind of love as you grow in the spirit and as you grow in the Lord result you will abide and be fruitful in your faith and in your trust in God now first Corinthians chapter 11 verse 1 says be you followers of me even as I am of Christ Jesus Christ is the ultimate answer so as example so as we look at how we are walking let us use the example of Christ as Paul refers to the followers that you know what? Follow me as I follow Christ. 
for growth to occur. Second Timothy chapter three, verse sixteen to seventeen. Every scripture is God breathed, given by His inspiration, profitable for instruction, for reproof, and conviction of sin, for correction of error, discipline, obedience, and we can see here for training in righteousness. Verse seventeen. So then, the man of God may be complete and proficient well fitted and thoroughly equipped for every good work we must be taught and instructed in order to grow spiritually for growth to occur we have to allow to be instructed and to be taught we must also allow to be rebuked and convicted of sin by the word of god now i'm talking about how to grow spiritually if you want to grow spiritually you have to look and allow yourself to be instructed and be taught by the Spirit. Someone is asking, which scripture are we reading? Yes, I just read Second Timothy chapter 3, verses 16 to 17. You must also allow the word of God and his spirit to rebuke you and to convict you of sin. You must have that freedom and choice you have made in you as a child of God. You know, that is one of the hardest things as children of God to allow the spirit of God to rebuke us and to convict us. I remember was it a couple of months ago? I laughed. I laughed so out. I laughed so loudly out. If there was someone next to me, they were going to get so confused. I was in the car and I was talking. I was talking. I, I love these morning times whereby I'm alone and I'm talking to God. You know, I'm having those conversations with my father. I mean, I'm talking to the father about that, this, the needs I have around me. And, you know, just a conversation. And the Holy Spirit was so on point, clearly in my thoughts. I had that voice tell me, Connie, now start acting like it. And I said, what should I act like? And he said to me, Connie, act like it. You just said you have faith. Two minutes ago. <laughs> but now, what you are saying is someone who is faithless. And just like that, that just like that, the hospital rebuked me and said to me, Act like it. If you are gonna say it, then act like it. I it was just, no one told me anything, just like that. The hospital rebuked me and stopped in my in my tracks and told me. You better act like it. If you say you trust God, then you better act like it. And up to today, I think it's three months ago, but even today, I can remember a rebuke that came from the Holy Spirit. Now, this rebuke did not come from a human being or someone. And does it mean I won't receive rebuke from a human being? I will. But we have to understand that the Spirit that is inside us has to have permission to rebuke us and we have to listen. You know, I immediately repented. I immediately stopped and I repented and I said, Oh Lord, forgive me. Forgive me for I said this. And then I turn around and I speak against what I've said. And this is what happens. We have to allow the Spirit of God not only to rebuke us, not only to convict us of sin, but we must be corrected of our errors, whether it's men that God has given authority over our lives, whether it's the spirit of God, whether you know what, it is the word of God. We have to also be able to allow people and the people that God has given influence around us to correct us. Okay. We must also be disciplined in obedience. We cannot be saying this and doing the other. We cannot be speaking the word of God, reading it. And it ends there and we are not obeying it. We want to grow. We ought then to obey the word of God. And let me tell you something. Practically speaking, obedience of the word of God is not easy at all, child of God. It is one of the hardest things. I believe that studying the word of God, reading it, memorizing it is the easiest part anyone can do. The hardest part is leaving that word that we read every day. And if you and I have to grow, we have to learn to obey the word of God. 
We have to humble ourselves. And when we go wrong and we contradict the same word that we read, the same word that we speak, we have to humble ourselves and repent. Repentance means I turn around 180 and I change. I don't just say I'm sorry and I don't repent. Repentance means I turn around and I do exactly what I'm supposed to do because I have said I'm sorry. It is that important. To grow, we must also walk in the spirit and not in the flesh. You will never grow while walking in the flesh. As a child of God, you walk in the spirit and you are directed by the spirit of God. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16 to 18. I say then, walk in the spirit and you shall not fulfill the lust of the flesh. For the flesh lusts against the spirit and the spirit against the flesh. And these are contrary to one another so that you do not do the things that you wish. But if you are led by the spirit, you are known under the law. Remember, walk in the spirit if you want to grow as a child of God. Promoting fruitfulness, growth. How do we promote fruitfulness? In other words, promote fruitfulness growth by number one, we have to know whether you like it or not. You have to know you are born again for you to promote being fruitful. You must be sure you are born again. If you are not sure, in other words, you can't remember a place, a day, an activity that happened on that day when you were giving your life to Jesus Christ, then I would like to encourage you to do it again. There's nothing, you know, nothing bad by doing it again. Second Corinthians chapter five, verses 17. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. All things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. You also have to immerse yourself in the word of God. If you are going to be able to promote fruitfulness in your life, the word of God is the best. The word of God is the truth. Colossians chapter 3 verses 16. Let the word of Christ dwell in you richly in all wisdom, teaching, acknowledging one another in psalms, hymns, spiritual songs, singing with grace in your hearts to the Lord. You also have to develop a love to worship God. I want to say this again. All the points that I'm giving are a choice that someone has to make. It shouldn't be forced upon you. It should be a choice to be born again. It should be a choice to read the word of God. It should also be a choice to worship God. Not forced, not reminded. It should become a lifestyle. Now, John chapter 4 verse 24 said, God is spirit and those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. You must live in obedience to Christ just like we have just talked about obedience. First Peter chapter 1 and verse 2. Elite according to the foreknowledge knowledge of God the Father in satisfaction of the Spirit for obedience and sprinkling of the blood of Christ Jesus. Grace to you and peace be multiplied. You must also be filled with the Spirit. Ephesians chapter 5 verse 18. Do not be drunk with wine by which in dispersion, but be filled with be filled with the Spirit of God. Galatians chapter 5 verses 16. I say then walk in the Spirit and you shall, you shall not fulfill the lusts of the flesh. I want to ask you, as someone who is studying right now, have you been filled with the Spirit? It is so important to be filled with the Spirit of God because you understand how to walk away from the flesh but to yield freely to the spirit of God resisting the world which is the flesh and the devil first John chapter 2 verses 15 do not love the world or the things in the world if anyone loves the world the love of the father is not in him first Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 27 it says yeah but I dis I discipline my body, bring it into subjection, least when I have preached to others, I myself become disqualified. First Peter chapter 5 and verse 9, resist him 
steadfast in faith, knowing that the same sufferings are experienced by your brethren in the world. Remember the word of God says here, you have to resist the world, the flesh and the devil. We do not beg <laughs> for the devil to leave us. Okay, We do not sit there in waiting for the world to leave us alone. We resist. Okay, And then we also flee. We flee, we resist so that you can be able to focus on the things of the spirit. It means, what does this mean? It means if you have to distance yourself from some people because you know kind of that these people don't have the same, you don't have anything in common with them. You know, it's different if it's a family member, but still you don't allow them to influence you spiritually. You have to learn, okay, when it says you resist the world, the flesh and the devil, it means you have to resist. We don't beg and ask God, remove this friend from me who is wrong. Child of God, you resist. If it means you have to cut your, yourself off of certain people or even cut yourself off of certain practices or certain gatherings or certain things where you are trying to protect that which is so valuable. You are trying to protect that. You are trying to grow in the spirit. You are trying to protect what is more valuable than the flesh. It means you are going to put measures in place so that you can also resist the devil. You cannot say you are resisting the devil when you are going into activities that you know. These are activities that you are going to find the enemy in. Okay, And so we try to put borders, boundaries, and we have to ask ourselves, this thing that I'm going to get involved in, is it important? Am I protecting my spirit so that you can grow spiritually? Otherwise, you are going to go backwards or you are going to become stagnant. Growth takes work. I'm sorry to tell you that it takes work. It takes measures. It takes discipline for you to be able not only to grow, but to promote growth. Okay. Another one here is being close in close relationship with other Christians. Key. First Corinthians chapter 15 verses 33. Do not be deceived. Evil company corrupts good habits. Look for a group of Christians that you know you can keep in fellowship with. That is the importance of small groups whereby you can interact one-on-one, -on -one, that can walk with you, that can encourage you. I cannot emphasize this more than anything. If it wasn't because of the fellow Christians that have walked my path with the Lord, I want to say without lying, I love Jesus, but I want to assure you, maybe I would be so discouraged, maybe today I wouldn't be still standing and growing in the Lord. There's something about people who you have the same vision and the same, you know, and you walk with them. And when you are down, you feel encouraged. When that time of storms when they come your way they are standing by you someone checking up on you and saying i am standing with you in prayer how are you doing honestly as a child of god who knows the struggle that we walk in as children of god walking with you is key so i want to encourage you as a student of the word surround yourself with people who are like-minded christians who are like-minded who love the Lord, who are on fire for the Lord, I'm telling you, will catch the fire. Surround yourself with Christians who walk pure in the Lord and they are not compromising and they are not being hypocrites. You will see yourself being lifted, uplifted and naturally, spiritually growing daily. So please make sure you look at the people you are walking with as a child of God. Now, being in prayer before the Lord is also another way how to promote spiritual growth. Luke chapter 5 verses 16, and this we can see well when we see our example, our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. So he himself often withdrew into the wilderness and prayed. If him, the Son of God, God himself, withdrew himself and spent time in prayer, then what about us? As Christians, it is so key to understand prayer 
one area in which we can go spiritually is to promote prayer spend time in prayer coming to the lord's table acts chapter 2 verse 42 and they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine fellowship in uh, the apostles doctrine and fellowship in the breaking of bread and in prayers you hear that breaking of bread there was fellowship that's one okay so let's go back they continued steadfastly in the apostles doctrine and that we can look at as the word of god number two fellowship with other christians number three the breaking of bread and number four prayers now breaking of bread is is put in these very important key areas of growth and you as a child of god this is very key for you to grow the breaking of bread and i love that it is done here daily so if you are struggling to do it alone in your home life is so busy you know what communion is done here at nine every morning now if you miss it on monday it is available on tuesday there's no excuse for you to not to grow in the spirit communion is done on this network every morning at nine and if you can't do it because you live alone you know what there's a fellowship of other Christians coming online to do communion together. So join in so that you can grow spiritually. Lastly, serving others and letting your light shine. Evangelize. This I cannot re-emphasize how evangelizing excites you. How evangelizing can keep you on fire for God. First Peter chapter 4 and verse 10. As each one has received a gift minister it to one another as good stewards of the manifold grace of god serve each other with the gift that has been given to you it keeps you it gives and i want to say this because i've noticed i have experienced this it just keeps that zeal that zeal burning for the lord i am telling you something the highlight of my week there are two highlights of my week i can tell you this is when I go to the prison ministry to reach out to others. The second one is on Wednesdays when I go to the hospital ministry. There is a new zeal and excitement and love that awakens in me when I go to give others this hope that I have received. Now, maybe you can't go to the prison just like me. Maybe you know what? You can't go to the hospital and you know what? For one hour. I go every Wednesday for one hour. To hospital but if you can't do that then there is a gift that god has given you serve someone serve another with what god has given you each one of us as children of god have been given an area in which we can reach out for the lost we can and i want to say to you and i want to encourage you there's something it does to your spirit to always reach out with the hope you have with that one who is hopeless it can just be a slice of bread. It can just be a quarter of bread that you give to someone that you see out there. That guy who is always standing in that corner. You know, just bread and reach out to this guy. And as you are giving him this bread or this lady this bread and you just say to them, God loves you. You know, and let me tell you something more than it does to that person. It does something powerful. To the person who is serving you know to that person so we conclude by saying growing in things of the lord is to represent the kingdom well if you and i want to represent the kingdom of god well we need to grow the world around us actually can notice when we are not growing more than you can notice the world around us can actually notice when you and i are not growing they can notice and let me tell you something they are talking they talk all the time you know how they talk they say if that one is a christian then i am also a christian it shows this person is not growing meaning that the world around us looks at us and sees you know what they look just like me they speak just like me <clears throat> there's no compassion there's no love how can they i mean i'm even better than them and if we want to represent our god our loving father, our merciful father, our powerful father, our gracious Jesus. 
then you and I have to grow spiritually so that we can bring not just a few fruit, not just enough, but much fruit so that the world can see our God and our Savior and the world will want this that you and I have got. Father, we want to pray, mighty Lord. Mighty Father, we pray that, Lord, even as we come before you, we pray that you will, mighty Lord, convict us. You will help us, rebuke us where we have to get up. We also pray that you will correct us as your children, O oh God. That as we give you permission to do that spirit of God, that we will grow. That as we grow, let your name be glorified, mighty Father. We pray that you soften our hearts to be able to obey your word, but also to be able to yield to your spirit. We pray and ask in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ. I hope you can go and grab your coffee. I don't know how hot you are on that side. <laughs> It is chilly on our side. It's something that we can't explain. Our weather in East London is up and down. But you know what? Go and grab something. Come back. Pastor Leslie is coming for the next session. Bless you.